The presidential tax force there just concluded. Let's continue with the news. President Muhammad Buhari this Monday participated at an online summit by the non-aligned movement where heads of government of the movement are of the view that national, regional and global strategies will be required to tackle the pandemic. The president says the tax for the tax before the international community remains downtown and more needs to be done to reduce the impact of COVID-19. State House correspondent Jide Onifade reports that President Buhari at the summit shows that his administration will intensify efforts to curb community spread of the virus in Nigeria. We must therefore form a united front against this common enemy by being coordinated and timely in our response. Furthermore, we must all encourage and empower our scientists and medical experts to join the quest for a vaccine and cure to this universal plague. In addition, we must acknowledge the central role of the United Nations and the World Health Organization in fighting the pandemic. It is therefore essential to fully collaborate and support their initiatives in coordinating the international fight against the pandemic. Such efforts should include the protection of our medical workers, the provision of medical supplies, especially test kits and ultimately finding a vaccine to cure the disease. Mr. Chairman and Excellencies, let me state that in the spirit of solidarity, we must collectively appeal to international financial institutions to assist member states in cushioning the negative impact of the pandemic. Let's look at all the issues. Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami says the Federal Republic of Nigeria on Monday 4th May 2020 confirmed the receipt of approximately 311,797,866 dollars and 11 cents of the Abacha asset repatriated from the United States and the Bailiwick of Jersey. A statement by Special Assistant of Media and Public Relations Office of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Dr. Dr. Umar Jibrilu Gundu indicates that the amount increased significantly from over $308 million mentioned in the press release issued in February 2020 to over $311 million because of the interest that occurred from 3rd February 2020 to 28th April 2020 when the, fund, when the fund was transferred to the Central Bank of Nigeria. He noted that the litigation process for the return of these assets titled Abacha 3 commenced in 2014, while the diplomatic process that culminated into the signing of the asset returned agreement on 3rd February 2020 by the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, United States of America and the Bailiwick of Jesse commenced in 2018. Let's now join our correspondent Mitari Ikben, who is already standing by to give us an update on what just played out at the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19. Mitari. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, today, the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 acknowledged that there were uh, significant breaches to its laid down rules and guidelines on day one of the easing of the lockdown, particularly in uh, Lagos, Abuja, and Ogun State. The uh, Presidential Tax Force noted that some of these breaches occurred in banks where there were issues of overcrowding and especially in the market places. The presidential tax force, the chairman of the tax force, Mr. Boss Mustafa, however, continues to appeal to Nigerians to observe these guidelines so that the PTF will not regret uh, easing of the lockdown. Uh, the NCDC DG particularly said that if some of these breaches continue unabated, the presidential tax force perhaps might be compelled to revert to a lockdown, but that is certainly what uh, some people will not pray for. And again, the Minister of uh, Environment told us that many public places and offices were fumigated and decontaminated before the reopening and resumption of work today. And uh, he said, this uh, fumigation and decontamination program will continue 
and it's expected to cascade to schools. He said schools will be fumigated and decontaminated ahead of uh, reopening at a later date. Also, the Minister of Foreign Affairs told us that about 4,000 Nigerians are interested in being repatriated back home from various locations, from various cities abroad. And he said this evacuation will commence this Wednesday uh, beginning with Nigerians uh, living in Dubai and another batch of Nigerians in the United Kingdom will be evacuated later on Friday. So those are some of the highlights from here. It's back to the studio. Thank you very much, Metari, for that update. And joining me in the studio is the chairman, FCT Tax Force on Enforcement of Interstate Travel Restriction and Other Affairs that has to do with the um, lockdown in the FCT. Um, please make welcome, Mr. Atta Isharu. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very us. much, my wonderful sister. Uh, and we do appreciate your patience, too. <laughs> thank so you. So what's the level of compliance when we're looking at interstate travel, especially for us in the FCT? I think for us in the FCT, it's, it's high. Uh, I would say it's high because what we are doing, if you had followed through uh, some of the reports uh, on the NTA and other uh, media platforms here, we actually got a case where we are not so comfortable that so many persons are coming into the FCT. Uh, just this morning, the Commissioner of Police and I, uh, we actually met our men on the ground here. They stopped a box of 13 persons, sorry, a J5 of 13 persons here that had come in from Akure throughout the night into the FCT here. And we are so worried because they had crossed, uh, left Akure against the rules, across Edo State, across Kogi State, and got to Abuja, even crossed Abuja and got to the heart of Abuja mm -hmm. just before the city gate here, before we intercepted uh, that vehicle here. Yesterday we got uh, a lorry load of uh, persons coming in from Zamfara State, having left uh, Karana Moda, across Guso, across Funtua, across Zaria, and found their way into uh, the FCT. We turned them back. Uh, we got the other one a day before uh, yesterday. We got a bus load of persons coming in from uh, Katsina State here. They had crossed again. They had uh, we turned them back. So what we are doing is turning them back because we understand very clearly that as far as we are concerned, we can't be keeping hundreds of thousands of persons. As we get them, we turn them back, escort them back. Some are saying they will come back uh, through uh, trekking or whatever, but we know that we have turned them back because they ought not to have come in the But from our own point here, interstate movement here, we have tightened the borders very strongly. Hmm. Uh, so much complaint had come in from some of your colleagues, uh, some of our friends who live in Maraba, uh, Maraba, uh, Masaka, Adowaman Village, uh, Uke and others because they could not come in easily here. And we are featuring those who are supposed to be at work here within the fact that we have a very close uh, communal border with Nasarawa State. The same thing is going on at Zuba. And by and large, I think we are we're doing Okay, that. but what, what kind of punishment will be leveled on them? Because I, I no. saw one today mm -hmm. at city gates yeah. they were intercepted no we turned them back we took okay. we turned them back escort them to abaji and we bid them farewell to go back are you sure they won't come back because no, what we, if we, we are sure and confident that they will not be coming back uh even if they want to come back we've taken you back to abaji uh we take your shots and we are watching at the vehicle we've given the number to our police formation okay. uh, the road safety officials here to actually check them to show that to just to ensure, ensure that they won't, they won't come back all right thank you very much mr atta i know you're doing a great job thank Keep you very please tell the banks to actually open all their branches okay. that's the problem we had today. i'm sure they can hear you let's quickly go on a break we'll be back shortly I wish to once again commend the frontline workers across the country who, on a daily basis, risk everything to ensure we win this fight. For those who got infected in the line of duty, rest assured that government will do all it takes to support you and your families during this exceedingly difficult period. I will also take this opportunity to assure you all that your safety, well-being, and welfare remains paramount to our government. I am using this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the families of all Nigerians that have lost their loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our collective loss, and we share your grief. COVID-19, ease 
of the lockdown. This is our focus on NTA Tuesday Live this week. What are the public issues involved the measures in place to curtail the spread of the virus? Tune in at 10.30 p.m. for NTA Tuesday Live. The program promises to be incisive and educative. Don't miss it. take responsibility. So I'm staying home, watching videos and learning as well. We are all aware of the pandemic hitting the world today. The COVID-19 virus is real. A big thank you to all our health workers, doctors, nurses, everybody fighting this pandemic in their own way. Please stay home, save lives. Prevention is better than cure. Stay responsible. is to say a big thank you to all the healthcare workers who put their lives on the line working in all the 36 states of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, especially Lagos, Kano, Ogun and Abuja to ensure that we beat COVID-19 in the least possible time. Thank you so much. You are our superheroes. This message is from the Governor's Wife's Fora, the wife of the Vice President and the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now believe this Koroti, you know if you touch black man, if you like gather the whole Niger come together, make a cough, <laughs> nothing. Which one you want? Give me V&D. Uh -huh. I beg, get small pieces. How much you want to give her? Give me 200. Take your change now. You know what your change is? My people, this coronavirus, na serious matter, no, na wash your hands regularly. Come use alcohol based hand sanitizer. If you know, see water, wash your hand, oh, make you sit down for house. You see this virus, so, you no get leg. Na we, they waka kuru kere. No waka ra, make the virus for die. No forget, say, the betterment of our people. Now for your handy day. This message is from the Akin Fade Foundation in partnership with the National Orientation Agency with support from MacArthur Foundation. Many thanks for staying with us. And we hear that social and economic activities are also picking up in Ogun State, just like we heard from FCT, um, due to the ease of the lockdown in the state. Lekon Agbadde, our correspondent, is joining us live now via telephone to give us a situation report. Lekon, what have you observed so far in the state? Uh, thank you, Ruth. Recently, since I've been distracted, uh, the window of relaxation for today expired at 5 p.m. People have returned to their houses. Meanwhile, lockdown is still in force in the state. Today is one of the relaxation days. 7 to 5 p.m. Monday, Monday and Friday. Full relaxation will commence next Monday, 9 of May. Entry new school went round today. Offices. We are open at 10% workforce capacity. According to the head of service, PPE have been provided for staff. They also experienced good luck on our way to Okemos of the state secretariat with influx of people into the city center. Most banks were open with large crowds of customers. It was difficult for them to observe social distancing. Let me also mention that I observed about 90% compliance with the instruction of the government for compulsory use of face masks by the people. All right, thank you very much, Lekon. I'm sure the situation is the same across the country. All right, let's head to Meduguri right away and join Mohammed to give us a situation report there. How is Meduguri, Mohammed? Thank you and welcome to Meduguri. Bruno State Governor Professor Bawagana Umara Zulum has warned 
world and community leaders involved in the distribution of COVID-19 palliative to ensure only the targeted beneficiaries get the support. The governor gave the warning while monitoring the exercise undertaken by the Borneo State Palliative Distribution Committee within Medugri, the state capital. Mayamuna Garba reports. On arrival at the venue, Governor Babagana Omar Zulum was received by the chairman of the committee, Engineer Bukar Telba, and other members of the committee. Governor Babagana Omar Zulum, who took his time to go around and inspect the items, expressed satisfaction with the quality of food stock. The governor, however, warned world leaders interested with the distribution at their various locations to ensure that the most deserving persons get the support. According to him, the idea is to support the most vulnerable members of the society, hence the need for them to be just and fair. Professor Zulum noted that government alone cannot provide support to all and sundry, but is just doing its best to ensure that the hardship of the poor is ameliorated. Engineer Bukar Telba informed the governor that work of the committee is going on successfully in an orderly manner. So far, he said the committee has covered 800 out of the 60,000 beneficiaries area marked for the metropolis, while additional 2,000 households will benefit at Gombe 1. Some of the beneficiaries were full of gratitude to Governor Babagana Omar Azulum for coming to their aid during the lockdown period. In my degree, my Munagarba, NTA News. One of the steps taken by Borno State Government to ensure that the two weeks lockdown imposed due to COVID-19 does not affect the education of secondary school students is the introduction of learning at home through the radio, television, and other social media platforms. This provided students a viable option for learning through e-education as they await resumption, especially SS3 on the verge of writing SSC examination when COVID-19 led to closure of schools. Abakar Mohamed Musa reports. The two weeks lockdown imposed on Borno due to coronavirus pandemic has continued to take its toll on the education sector, especially the closure of schools. Worried by the consequences associated with the lockdown, particularly on candidates preparing to write WIAC and NACO examinations, Borno State Government, through the Ministry of Education, deemed it an imperative to introduce what it called Learn at Home program, where students are taught all the basic subjects via television and radio platforms. Even during this lockdown, mm. we'll have something doing to refresh our minds and to add more knowledge to ourselves. Mm. Now that with this corona pandemic, everyone is at home, it helps us because some things we were taught in school, we forgot, but this thing has opened back our memory. This initiative has yielded the desired result, as the program has so far covered a significant number of persons. With regard to the line at home, that is through the uh, is it the television or the radio? Definitely, it will carry uh, it will carry more weight to our younger generation, most especially those who are now preparing to write their work. I want to thank the Borno State Ministry of Education for this um, um, opportunity to uh, make our students not to be redundant at home. And um, may I quickly say that um, uh, most schools have not covered their WIAC syllabus. Uh, and this program will go a long way to, to help the students. We have uh, chosen qualified teachers to handle the subjects appropriately. The lessons are designed and simplified in a form that uh, learners can understand without difficulty. This learning through the broadcast media initiative is being complemented by other online teaching processes through social media platforms in Meduguri, Abu Bakr Mohammed Musa, NT News. That's all from Meduguri. It's back to Ruth in Abuja. Thank you, Mohammed. Let's look at more issues. The need to harness research results to develop Nigeria's homegrown technology in line with what obtains in other climes has again re-echoed, has again been re-echoed on NTS Good Morning Nigeria. The guests, while this course in COVID-19, World of Science and Technology, says it's no doubt, it's, there, there are no doubts that Nigeria has the capacity but decried the lack of synergy for a coordinated effort for maximal results. Let's hear from Lydia Samson. The guests who are critical key players in science and technology are unanimous that given the needed policy implementation drive, Nigerian scientists can produce homegrown technology of international standard with additional peculiarities to meet the nation's indigenous needs. The guests advise Nigerian scientists to rise to the challenge of COVID-19 
as ventilators and hand sanitizers, hand washers, and face masks are being produced locally by different institutions. They however decried the disconnect between the institutions and manufacturers, which they say has hindered technological growth. Knowledge that can be able to radiate us on a track of survival. You must know everybody, where they have been, where they are heading to, what do they do, who they have spoken to, and so on and so forth. So if you don't patronize your own, how can you create more jobs? We need to duplicate for other people, uh, I mean, to duplicate this production so that what we have invented and are doing, other people can do it and commercialize it elsewhere. The guests are of the view that Nigeria does not lack policy and capacity, but insists implementation remains a major challenge. The government that will bridge the gap is the government that will pass instruction because they are the proprietors of the research institutes and the universities. Targets has to be given, and of course, it's also government that will motivate uh, the, the, the public, small scale manufacturers or medium scale, to harness or harvest the ideas that have been generated. We are looking at the hydro resources around AOG and how to be able to do feasibility studies on them, which we had a lot of energy into the, the, the power grid. Part of our production of the hand washing machine, we have mass production there so that we'll be able to, uh, to, to produce for the, uh, the immediate polytechnic community and also to see if uh, to make some available to members of the public. The call for more proactive coordination across board for knowledge-based approach to strengthening Nigeria's science and technology to equip the country while preparing ahead or to prevent viruses like COVID-19. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. And joining me via Zoom now to discuss the impact of COVID-19 on the economy is Abdul Ghaffar Bello from the University of Ilari. Good day. Okay, now the federal government is the lockdown um, in Ogun State, Lagos and the FCT. What does this portend for the economy? Uh, well... It means a lot to the economy of the country, especially because of the level of the economy. We know Nigeria is a low-income economy. To the extent that uh, the loss of uh, production, to the extent that uh, under production is likely to take place, when people have been locked down, there will be unemployment because there will be loss of job, unemployment will increase. Moreover, there will be short supply of uh, goods and services, which, of course, as a result of need for increased demand, will likely cause a lot of problems like inflation and uh, many more. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bello. That's the much we can take. And that's it on Nationwide. We do appreciate your time. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Ruth Aguela. Bye. <laughs>